developing at this hour. Authorities continue to search for a group of armed robbers targeting 7-Elevens in the city and the suburbs overnight. Another 7-Eleven was hit up. All active investigations. Let's get out to Steve. He's at police headquarters. Yeah, as soon as the calendar turned to today's date, we had the 8th 7-Eleven armed holdup and just the past few days since July 22nd. And the question is, is this one also committed by the prior seven, which seem to be all linked from the same guys? Well, it looks like a no, although it had similarities. And here is the scene. Uh, secondly, this is the second one in Philadelphia. Uh, but the one yesterday was out on Ridge Avenue in Roxborough, and that was almost on the outskirts of Philly, where this one is in the inner city in maybe the most dangerous neighborhood in all of Philadelphia, Kensington, right under the SEPTA train tracks there, the elevated train at Ontario and Kensington Avenue. It was a lone gunman walking in at midnight, holding up the clerk, only getting 100 bucks. And the other difference is that he came in a car, which was obvious and seen on the outdoor surveillance, a silver Nissan that he took off down Ontario Street after getting his 100 bucks cash, hardly worth the risk of being busted for an armed holdup and getting a five-year jail stint because you're using a gun during a crime. Uh, the other similarity was he walked in with sunglasses, but maybe he's been watching the news and saw uh, this surveillance video that we had yesterday that matched a lot of the other surveillance videos from the prior holdups. A guy with a gun and lime green neon covered gloves joined by a second guy with a gun wearing gloves. And these guys have used sunglasses to cover the top part of their faces in their holdups as well. Uh, but Philly police detectives matched these guys uh, with the guys that were in the suburbs from their shoes to their sweatpants and to their sweatshirts as well. And then these guys also hit a 7-Eleven in Conshohocken on Fayette Street yesterday as well. And they've been hitting two at a time on three of the days since July 22nd. So Thomas, even though it has a similarity that it's another 7-Eleven holdup, it doesn't look like it's the same crew that has been hitting the prior seven. Yeah, either way, it's very troubling, not just taking cash, but really just terrorizing these workers and changing lives. Steve, we appreciate the update. All right, let's get to this an investigation tonight after a dancer from Philadelphia was killed in New York, and officials are really looking into whether this was a hate crime. I'm Jason Martinez here at 6 o'clock. We have learned the victim is O'Shea Sibley and was a beloved former dancer at Philodanko. Our Jeff Cole spoke with his father today. O'Shea Sibley learned to dance as a teenager here at Philodanko in West Philly. His friends say he was slain in New York over the weekend simply because he was gay. O'Shea Sibley was a son of North Philly, an exuberant, fun-loving child who'd loved to sing and dance from an early age. His dad, speaking via Zoom from Disney World on a trip O'Shea was to take, remembers his young son asking for a telescope. I'm like, why are you want to tell us? But he said, I want to see the stars. I said, why? He said, that's where I want to be. I want to be out there. I want to reach the top. You know what I mean? He wanted to go far. He just wanted to do different things. What he most wanted was to dance, and his desire landed him at the renowned Philadelphia dance company known as Philodanko at the age of 14. According to published reports, O'Shea Sibley openly gay moved to New York before the pandemic in search of opportunities to dance and choreograph. Late Saturday night at a Brooklyn gas station, his life ended. O'Shea is more like a peacemaker. If you're with him and somebody's trying to do something to you, he'll try to defuse the situation. And that's what it looked like he was doing there, trying to defuse the situation. Police report Sibley and a group of friends were filling up at the gas station and dancing to the music of Beyonce when a group of men approached, allegedly using gay slurs, ordering the dancing to stop. When Sibley moved toward them and spoke, he was stabbed. New York City police say its hate crimes unit is investigating and searching for a young man in his late teens. Why do you think gay men are attacked in this way? I have the slightest idea. I can begin to tell you that one. It's just some people just fear the unknown, I guess. The slaying has prompted outrage and LGBTQ groups are decrying an uptick in violence against gay Americans. Philodanko has posted images on Facebook of its former student doing what he loved while those who loved him mourn. How do you handle his loss? It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. We're just going to take it one day at a time. That's all we can do.
Take it one day at a time. Sibley will be remembered this weekend in New York. His family members expect to be there. In West Philly, Jeff Cole, Fox 29 News. I'm scared in Philadelphia's Crescentville neighborhood. This is at the Chase ATM at a shopping center on Rising Sun Avenue. Police say an unexploded device was reported inside the machine just after 2 this afternoon. The bomb squad and ATF were called to remove the device. Surveillance video shows a driver slamming into a man on a scooter. Then that car just drives off. This is the 10 o'clock news. I'm Dawn Timoney. Hit and runs are becoming an ongoing problem in Philadelphia. And this victim says he is really lucky to be alive. And Shawna, you spoke to him tonight. Well, Don, the victim says that witnesses tell him that the car was a blue Pontiac G6. Again, it hit him and kept going. Now, warning right now, we're about to show you video of the hit and run. The victim is okay, but he talked to me tonight about what happened. The sound as well, I'll never forget of it. Just lay, like, it was almost like it was in a vacuum. And then, you know, I was rolling on the ground. Security camera footage from a resident captures a hit and run that knocked a young man off his scooter and sent his bike skidding down the street. He miraculously is able to get right up after the impact. The emotional shock is, is still there. The physical shock has kind of gone away. Andrew Boyer says he was lucky to walk away with minor injuries, including a sprained wrist. A lot of, you know, soreness, achiness, um, you know, limping. You know, my body's all covered in, in cuts and scrapes and bruises. It happened last Thursday, just after 5 o'clock in the evening. Boyer says he was coming home from work. He got to 20th and Girard, and the unexpected happened. I pulled to the red light, and I'm waiting there. Light turns green, and then as I'm... You know, taking off the car blows through the red light, uh, T bones me, and you know, my scooter goes the one way, I go another. The driver kept going, and Boyer says he didn't see the car until it was too late. It was, do I put the brakes on? Do I try to speed away? And I went with, I'll, I'll try to put the brakes on, hoping that they would just speed through, but I don't know if they put the brakes on or what. They showed me the scooter parked outside their North Philly home, which they say is a complete loss. Boyer says he paid $2,800 for it a month ago as transportation to and from school at Temple and work at the Barnes Foundation. It's really, really disheartening, especially when, when that person didn't even stop to make sure he was alive. They're grateful, though, that Boyer survived and is recovering. I should have walked away with a lot worse, you know, injuries, so it's, it's, it's a miracle that, you know, I'm able to, like, walk away from that. And Philadelphia police say that this hit and run is still under investigation. Meanwhile, Boyer and his girlfriend have a GoFundMe set up to recoup losses that he suffered during this hit and run. That includes time missed from work and a cell phone, he says, was damaged in the crash. You can find it by going to fox29.com. Don? All right, Shana, truly a miracle. He wasn't more hurt. Thank you. Right now at 5, the Upper Darby Director of Parking Enforcement is facing charges. We're talking a long list of theft charges, including receiving stolen property along with other accusations. Now, this comes after a months-long investigation. Good evening. I'm Dawn Timoney. Our Jeff Cole joining us live now with the details. Jeff, what can you tell us? Well, Don, the Delaware County District Attorney says that the head of parking in Upper Darby actually stole $4,000 in coins from parking kiosks in town and then paid $2,000 back when things got hot. Warren Kennedy complains using the parking meters in Upper Darby is often a maddening experience. You just tried to park and put some money in the meter? Yes, and it's broken. Every time you put the money in the meter, it's broke. It's, it's, and then they come and give you a ticket right afterwards. His frustration is understandable, but it turns to near anger when told the woman who runs parking, Sakella Coles, is accused of sticking her hand in the till. She has literally admitted to county detectives that she stole the coins out of parking kiosks in Upper Darby Township. Uh, this is a sad day, of course, for the people of Upper Darby. Coles, seen here on her Facebook page in which she posts about her public service work, is charged with counts of theft and receiving stolen property for allegedly directing a township employee to take coins from parking kiosks, turn them into cash at a bank, and bring them back to Coles in her position as director of parking enforcement. The Delco DA alleges the cash was used for office parties and to benefit Coles personally, and there's more. 
she went in as parking director, uh, went into the system and deleted eight tickets for family members uh, so they were not paid monies that were owed to the township for violation of the parking ordinances. Mayor Barbara Ann Kaffer appointed Coles in January of 2020. In a statement, Kaffer writes the township has already taken several steps to ensure stronger internal controls to immediately address this situation and alter our parking accounting procedures. Coles' attorney says she was inexperienced experienced in her job. Uh, there was believed to be a sum of money taken from the machines that was used as a petty cash without any direction or policy or guidance from any party stating that it could not be done. Warren Kennedy wants a price to be paid. We all got to pay consequences. So she should get she should pay consequences too Very for our actions. The Delaware County DA also says that the parking office failed to forward some 18,000 tickets to the courts so that some folks who may have been parking violators may never have to pay. At the Media Courthouse, Jeff Cole, Fox 29 News. Dawn. All right, Jeff, thank you. Chester County, a group of teens, is wanted for vandalizing the Westchester Railroad. The railroad company posted these pictures on Facebook, they say in the 15 minutes that they were there, the group of nine teens, they were on this property Friday night. They were able to climb on the equipment. They broke windows, smashed the windshield of a high rail truck. And if you recognize these kids, they want you to call police. Well, how dangerous is that? My God. Not all heroes wear capes. Instead, some carry apple Air tags. Yeah, a Fishtown couple who had their potted plants stolen from in front of their home decided they weren't taking any more chances. So they put the tracking devices in their pots. And when one disappeared again, they had a big clue where to find it. Our Kelly Rule with the story. Jennifer Bagby's day job is in real estate, but Philadelphians might know her by her newest role, plant vigilante. Vigiplanty, if you will. Is that like what you're going to go by now? I, Should we? <laughs> I think so. I think so. That's what I've been telling all my friends. <laughs> Jennifer and her husband Kevin say someone stole two of their potted plants from their steps on York Street back in late June. And they took to a Fishtown Facebook group about the frustrating theft. Preventative ideas came rolling in, including sticking Apple Air Tags in the pots. The devices can be tracked through an iPhone app. I mean, it definitely seemed like a little overkill for, you know, a plant. But then I was like, actually, well, if you think about, like, the cost of the pot, all the plants, like, the time, the and love, the, the care, <laughs> and then, yeah, the principle of 100%. Then I was like, we're doing this. And yesterday morning proved why. Kevin says he noticed the pot missing just before 9 a.m. His phone tracked it roughly a mile and a half away. No, I couldn't wait to wake her up and... Uh tell her and we, yeah, we gotta we gotta go on a little mission here <laughs> the Bagbys say they drove to third and cambria streets got out walked around talked to neighbors and they were about to give up when they saw a man wheeling a cart of plants down the street and sure enough they heard the faint ping of their apple air tag and sure enough it was ours and uh we honestly i mean it was such a quick interaction we were like thanks bye um and he was like i didn't steal it and i was like okay and then we just went on our merry way jennifer posted about the ordeal in a fishtown facebook group and it took off and we had to ask people their thoughts oh you got to proceed with caution everything you do and if you need to use an apple tag to protect your plants then go do it i got plants i'm not putting air tags in my plants jennifer says if the situation felt dangerous they wouldn't have approached but their plant is back home and the community is now rooting for her pun intended. I think it's just kind of one of those stories that like we'll have in our pocket for when we're, you know, when we're sitting on the porch when we're 90, we're going to like laugh about this. In Fishtown, Kelly Rule, Fox 29 News. Now the Bagbees tell Fox 29 they did not file a police report. They did not expect to get the plant back and the situation happened so fast. We asked Philadelphia police about tracking down stolen items and they say there's always a risk you could get hurt. Their recommendation is to call them first and if you can track the item, have police respond and do the confronting. Police are looking for the, the driver of this van in connection with a deadly hit and row, run in Monroe Township. It happened last night around 1130 on the Black Horse Pike. Police say a 45 year old man from Williamstown was struck and killed as he was walking across the road near the intersection of Corkery Lane. The driver just kept on going. If you have any information at all, police want to hear from you. Saved by a headrest, a woman is really lucky to be alive after she was shot in the head while driving on Roosevelt Boulevard. This is the 10 o'clock news. I'm Dawn Timoney. And I'm Chris O'Connell. Police say the headrest slowed down that bullet, helping to save the victim's life. Jennifer Lee is live on the boulevard tonight. And Jen, the search is now on for the shooter. 
Yes, exactly. Philadelphia police say the woman who was shot is an innocent victim, and this bullet could have hit anyone driving on the boulevard. It's dangerous out here today. Sky Fox showing traffic at a standstill on Friday afternoon. Yellow tape draped over a white SUV Philadelphia police say was shot at on Roosevelt Boulevard. The 35-year-old driver rushed to Jefferson Torsdale Hospital. I'm just glad that, you know, she didn't pass or anything. She could, was able to survive so she could be with her family. Early investigations show a group was just up the road at the intersection of Roosevelt Boulevard and Conwell Avenue putting up candles and balloons in memory of a man killed in a motorcycle crash earlier this week. Police say a passing vehicle threw a water bottle at the group. One of them responded by firing their weapon at the car, but missed and instead hit the innocent woman. When that bullet penetrated the window and into the headrest, it was the headrest that was really instrumental in preventing much further damage to the victim. So. Uh, we're thankful of that. Police say there were two child seats in the back of the white SUV. Thankfully, no children or passengers were in the car. Detectives are looking at both ballistic evidence and surveillance video, including a passing SEPTA bus that may have captured it all. I learned to have patience. Omar Moore says it's not worth getting heated behind the wheel and tries his best to keep it moving. The driver just want to argue and fight back. I just stood, stopped my car and let him go in front of me and let him go on about their way. It's crazy out here today. Yeah, and that woman who was shot in the head, police believe she will make a recovery, again, crediting her headrest for slowing down that bullet. If anyone has information about the shooting, police would like to hear from you. Bethlehem police say they have a man in custody accused of planning to detonate an explosive at Music Fest. This is a live shot of Bethlehem from Earth Cam, where the 10-day festival just kicked off hours ago. Police say they received a tip yesterday. The suspect identified as Robert Bowen planned to set off quote improvised explosive police say uh, the FBI and the bomb squad taking Bowen into custody today they believe Bowen is linked to several recent reports of someone setting off firework sized devices around Bethlehem again the suspect is in custody and police say there is no danger to the public Developing story out of Delaware County where a hit and run involving a state police trooper shut down I-95 for more than an hour. And Ellen Kaloje is live in media. Ellen, you just got an update? We did, Jason. Originally, some firefighters on the scene told us that they knew that a trooper was injured, but we just received an update from state police here in media that two people were injured, including a trooper in a hit and run crash. And now police are asking for the public's help. Just before 4 o'clock, police say a state trooper was responding to a two-car accident on 95 South in Chester, right by the Chester exit off the highway. Police say while the trooper was waiting for a tow truck to arrive, another car came up and slammed into the door of the trooper's vehicle while the trooper was inside and then took off down 95. You can see the skid marks on the highway. The trooper was taken to Riddle Hospital in media with minor injuries and was later released. We saw some troopers outside the hospital. Another woman was taken to nearby Crozier Hospital with moderate injuries. Now, traffic was backed up for almost two hours when 95 was shut down in the southbound lane as investigators tried to piece together exactly what happened. So again, traffic is back to normal after being shut down for almost two hours on 95 in the southbound lane. But again, state police are asking for the public's help. So if anyone knows anything about this hit and run accident, again, it was on the southbound lane of 95. It happened about 3.45 this afternoon. Please contact police immediately. We're live in media, Ellen Kaloje, Fox 29 News. An FBI investigation in Tioga turns violent with an agent opening fire shooting one person. Tonight, sources tell us this may all be connected to a string of armed robberies targeting area 7-Eleven stores. Shauna Wilson has the latest. Well, Chris, we haven't received any information on the person shot, their condition, or whether they had a weapon. All we know is that agents were serving warrants when the shooting happened.
A Tioga Street shut down today after an Asian-involved shooting. Our cameras on the scene at the 1700 block of West Venango Street where the shooting happened. A spokesperson for the FBI said in a statement earlier today that Asian sought to serve arrest and search warrants on a person at a home nearby. At some point, investigators say that person was shot by an agent. A neighbor who lives feet away from where it happened told me off camera she heard the gunshots and looked out to see a man bleeding from the stomach area. Our cameras captured agents in hazmat-like suits, others in military-style vests, searching the street under cars and between homes. It's unclear exactly what evidence they were looking for. While the FBI hasn't detailed what the investigation is about, a source tells Fox 29 it may be linked to a string of recent armed robberies of 7-Eleven stores in our area. In some cases, the gunmen assaulted employees before getting away with cash. The FBI said then that they are investigating five of the robberies which they believe are connected. Those happened in Delaware County, Montgomery and Bucks counties. Since then, two more happened at 7-Eleven stores in the Roxborough area of Philly and in Conshohocken. Investigators are looking into whether they were connected. Back to Tioga today, the SWAT team and FBI director Jacqueline McGuire were on scene. She did not talk to media. And it is policy. The FBI's inspection division is handling the investigation. Don. All right, Seanette Wilson, live for us in Center City. Thanks, Seanette.